Always love having new blood on the show. Greg Brosh, Fantasy Knuckleheads, joined me earlier in the week and provided some outstanding fantasy football information. Some of you might have drafts this week, so listen up. Greg talks about some quarterbacks, tight ends, and who can you get as a steal. Greg Brosh of FantasyKnuckleheads.com, the Sports Buffet Podcast. The NFL season is getting close, which means all you fantasy players need to get your fantasy drafts and rosters done here in the next couple weeks. Greg Brosh, general manager at FantasyKnuckleheads.com, is going to try and help us out today with a few questions. And Greg, let's start off with a guy who didn't play last year, but is normally one of the most sought-after players in fantasy Peyton Manning, uh, what round should you target Peyton in this year? Well, Bob, I'm not going to target Peyton Manning any high, or any lower than, or any higher, I should say, than the seventh to eighth round. Um, if I wanted to wait and let guys like Drew Brees and Stafford go earlier, that's the earliest I would take him. Don't forget, you know, he's coming off radical neck surgery. He didn't play last year. I think some people are overvaluing him some. Don't forget, he's, he's playing with the new offense in Denver. Uh, he's definitely going to feel the effects from that neck surgery. And reports came out that he doesn't have the strength anymore to throw the deep ball. Uh, I know that may worry some owners, but again, it's still Peyton Manning. I think that he's going to have this successful season, just not as good as he did. Um, as far as how he affects the rest of the players, I think Demarius Thomas is going to be okay. Even though he's a deep threat, I could see Peyton Manning still getting him heavily involved. Uh, the two guys I really do like, though, in the offense are Eric Decker and uh, Jacob Cam, the tight end who had played with Manning in, uh, in when they both were the Colts. Because uh, Manning's probably going to lose some of that arm strength, Eric Decker and Cam are going to catch more of the underneath stuff. I think Eric Decker makes an excellent PPR option as a possible wide receiver three, and we might even see him boost to a wide receiver two during the season. Jacob Cam is a guy who I absolutely love. I think he has an excellent chance to bounce back from last season. Of course, what Colts didn't have a bad season last year with Curtis Painter uh, as the quarterback, but Jacob Tam is a guy I really like. And obviously the running game is going to be affected too with uh, with Peyton Manning being able to get the pass. I like Willis McGahee too, but I think it didn't matter who was going to be the quarterback. Willis McGahee in the backfield was still going to be uh, drafted around the where they are now, even with or without Peyton. So if, you, if you're in a league that you start two quarterbacks, do you want Peyton as one of yours, or would you rather have him as that third guy that you can play here and there? Well, he's a guy that I think can still be a QB1. I just don't think he's going to put up the numbers that he did with the Colts. And don't forget, once that, that cold weather starts to play in, uh, in Denver, I mean, that's going to affect him too. He's not used to playing in cold weather after playing in the Dome in, in Indianapolis for so many years. Uh, you know, if I had to take him as a, as a QB1 and then take a, a Vic or a Cam Newton as my QB2 in a two-quarterback league, I think that'd be great. But if I had Manning, I might even think about maybe a Christian Ponder or a, a Jake Walker uh, in the later rounds if I want to flesh out my, my roster. But if I had Peyton Manning as my number one, then definitely getting Vic or Cam as my number two would definitely steal the deal. And I would say it's Ponder and Locker for my, for my QB3. I'm in a situation uh, where I have Vic and Cam in the league and I can start two quarterbacks. Should I look at that third quarterback uh, early based on Vic and Cam's uh, style of play in terms of they run the ball a lot, which means uh, one hit could put them out for two, three weeks? Well, I really don't think you want to. I mean, with with quarterback-heavy leagues, a lot of the quarterbacks are going to be taken early, which means there's going to be a lot of running backs and a lot of wide receivers. I think in a two-quarterback league, you still want to undervalue the rest of your your roster. I mean, you still want to get those two quarterbacks, but like I said, I think that if you end up getting a Jake Locker, who I really like, I think he's going to end up beating Matt Hasselbeck for the starting job sometime during the season. And Christian Ponder has looked really great. I think you can get them sometime in the teens. I don't think I would draft another quarterback before, like, round eight or round nine after you already have Vic and Cam sealed up because... You know, there is a chance that they could get injured, but you kind of don't want to go into the season worrying about that. You just want to hope that they stay together all 16 games and then look at one of those guys from Locker and Ponder in the in the team. Uh, a few friends of mine had uh, given me some questions to ask you, too. Uh, do you take a flyer on any rookie quarterback this season? If I had to, if it is 14 team league or a 16 team league I'd almost have to but I think the only two that you want to look at are Andrew Luck and RG3 uh, everybody else you know you have Brandon Whedon from the 
Um, the Browns, you know, he's going to start this year, but let's face it, the Browns' passing game is a mess right now. You have Ryan Tannehill from the Dolphins, who was also drafted in the first round, and their passing game is even worse now that it's got rid of Chad Johnson. I usually don't, in a normal 12-team league, take a chance on a, a rookie quarterback, even as my QB2. If I had to, I would probably take Luck, only because I think he's going to have much more value in the Colts system. RG3 really is going to get most of his points from uh, being around the red zone and his running uh, ability. But if I had to, I would take Andrew Luck, but I would really wait late and get the rest of my running backs wide receivers first before I, I would take them. But if I didn't have to, I would definitely not take a rookie quarterback if I didn't have to. Is it smart for people to sometimes think of, well, and I'll just use the Browns as an instance, uh, you know, while the Browns are not that great, they're going to be behind a lot, so they're going to have to throw a lot. Do people kind of overthink that, if you know what I'm saying? I think they do, and, you know, the, the Brandon Whedon does have abilities, but don't forget the players that are playing around them. Uh, Muhammad Masakwa is currently fighting Josh Gordon for a starting spot. Josh Gordon is raw coming out of Utah State. Um, you know, and they have Greg Little who, you know, has drop problems. Sounds like there's, there's a good chance that they might dump Ben Watson. He really doesn't have anybody to throw to. And yeah, they're going to be playing behind a lot, but if you don't have the talent to be able to catch those balls, I mean, what's the point? I mean, we've seen so many times in the past where a really bad offense has to come back and they just get watered. They, they, they have to throw the yards, but they just can't get them because of the talent that's surrounding the quarterback. Lots of guys uh, have slumps after having uh, good years the previous years. Uh, who do you uh, see maybe destined for a uh, slump or maybe not, not great numbers this season? Number one guy that, as soon as I saw the question, Michael Turner from the Falcons, uh, he is done. This last year was his last good year. He had a few straight years of 300-plus carries and 1,300-plus yards. Uh, the team wants to become more of a passing offense and make use of Roddy White, Julio Jones, and Tony Gonzalez, and Harry Douglas. Uh, plus, I'm really high on Jacquees Rogers, who I think is going to eventually take the starting job for Turner sometime this year. Uh, you know, Turner ran on fumes at the end of last year. Uh, just a guy who had so many carries in the past that I just think he's, he's just not built for the, the offense. He's, he's not a pass-catching running back. Uh, had a great year last year, but I think he's done. He's definitely a guy I'm staying away from. Do you see a fall-off with uh, Jimmy Graham with the Saints? Do I see a fall-off in terms of tight ends? In terms of, no, in terms of more of his numbers. In terms of, I mean, I, I take it Jimmy Graham's obviously a guy that you still want to get. How early do you get him, and should people maybe not expect the same numbers in terms of touchdowns and yards that he had last year? Well, if it's a PPR league and it's six points for all touchdowns, I do like him a lot. I've seen him drafted as high as the first round. Uh, I've seen Rob Gronkowski and Jimmy Graham go as high as the first round and the second round. Um, if it was a PPR league and six points for all touchdowns, I do my best to secure him in the second round. The one thing I like about him is he doesn't have a lot of weapons outside of Marcus Colston. They got rid of Robert Meacham, who went to the Chargers. Uh, and really, Marcus Colston is, is the other guy who puts up consistent numbers. So I really like him a lot more than Gronkowski, who's going to have to share with guys like Hernandez, Wes Welker, they brought in Brandon Lloyd, who I really like. Uh, Graham has the upside to be another Antonio Gates when Gates was back in his heyday. And as far as drafting tight ends, I would try to secure either this guy or another guy in the top four rounds. Uh, I've been having really good success with drafting either Graham or, or Vernon Davis with my, my, my first four picks. I think with tight ends, you really want to lock up a guy because, let's face it, I mean, tight ends are starting to get used more and more because more teams are going to a passing offense. It seems like running backs are starting to lose heavy value as the years go on. Do you have a sleeper tight end that a lot of people don't think of? Um, uh, right now, my guy is, is Jacob Cam. Uh, he, uh, he's, I don't know if you could consider him a sleeper right now. Right. Uh, I really like his, his chances. And, you know, if the, if the Browns end up getting rid of Watson, uh, Evan Moore is uh, another guy who, who I like as well. And let me, there's another tight end that I like. His name is Jordan Cameron. Right now, he's the number two behind Watson. Uh, it sounds like he's playing really good. If the Browns make Watson expendable, 
I think Jordan has a, an excellent chance to uh, to make a name for himself, especially with the, the receivers not living up to how they should. You know, Brady Little, Muhammad Massaquai, Josh Gordon, like I said before. Uh, if they end up getting rid of Ben Watson, Jordan Cameron is an athletic guy, 6'5", 245 pounds out of USC. I think he could be a decent sleeper pick because we all know rookie quarterbacks love to rely on the tight end as their safety net. So if Ben Watson's gone, Jordan Cameron's another guy to keep an eye on. You did mention the Chargers, and I kind of forgot to even write this down as a prep question for you, but uh, Robert Meacham and uh, and uh, Floyd, how do you see that breaking down? Are either either one of those guys, uh, can they have elevate to it maybe a uh, a solid two, if not a one, for a receiver? Well, Robert Meacham's more of a stretch-the-field guy, throw it up and hope he catches it. That's his. That was his job with the Saints. Uh, the Chargers find him to be a number one guy. Uh, the one guy I really like, though, is, is Malcolm Floyd. He's used to the offense. Uh, with Vincent Jackson now gone to the Buccaneers, I think he stands a really good chance to improve his numbers from last year. And plus, he's playing in a contract year. That's one thing I like to let owners know. you got to look at those guys who are playing in a contract year because a lot of the times those players are looking for a big payday, so they'll play over their heads. And Malcolm Floyd is one of those guys that I really like. I think a lot of hype has been going to Robert Meacham, but if you can get Malcolm Floyd in the later rounds, I think you got yourself an excellent wide receiver three. I think a lot of people get freaked out with the uh, Madden curse. Uh, Megatron, Calvin Johnson's on the cover. I take it uh, you would still take Calvin Johnson and not worry about a silly little curse? No, I wouldn't. You know, I I think it's just one of those situations that's been overblown. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I can't think off the top of my head all the players that, that got injured or ended up getting suspended because they were on the cover, but I think Calvin Johnson's going to finally uh, break that trend. I don't even look at That's like so far off my radar, I don't even look at that. Yeah, I, I think people like to build that up like the uh, Sports Illustrated, and I don't know if you believe in uh, in curses, but, you know, I, I think in our 24-hour, uh, seven-day-a-week news cycle now, everybody's got to have something to talk about. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, and once training camp start, you know, with training camp starting and we're in the preseason, all that stuff fades away. You know, in the off season, everybody's looking for something to talk about because it's slow part of the season. they got to bring things up, got to write about something, but I, I don't believe all that stuff. What about some running backs once we get past the uh, top uh, top guns? I'd sent you a list of some names. Uh, just touch on maybe two or three that you liked off that list. Well, I, I put all of them into tiers. Uh, tier one, uh, you sent me Trent Richardson, Adrian Peterson, and Maurice Jones Drew. Now, I, lo- I know a lot of people are warning about the, uh, the scope that Trent Richardson underwent on his knee. It doesn't sound as serious as initially claimed. It sounded like it was just a hangnail of cartilage that had to be removed from his first scope. Um, I wasn't really high on him as an RB1 to begin with, even if he was healthy, only because I don't want to rely on a rookie in a bad situation with the Browns being my number one guy. And plus, don't forget, with running backs and a lot of other rookies, when are they going to hit the rookie wall? I mean, you could take this guy as your number one guy, and once the fantasy playoffs come, boom, he's shot. You know, he's worn out. But uh, tier one, I have Trent Richardson, Adrian Peterson, who was taken off the pup list, and Maurice Jones-Drew. Now, in a perfect world, you know, I'm hoping Maurice Jones-Drew comes back and plays week one. If he doesn't, you got to lock up Rashad Jennings as fast as you can because he's going to be the starter. Uh, Adrian Peterson, you got to lock up Toby Gerhardt as soon as you can because who knows when Peterson's going to come back or how long this holdout MJD is going to come, how long he's going to hold out. Uh, my tier two guy, Jamal Charles, Steven Jackson, Frank Gore, Matt Bradshaw, Doug Martin, and Marshawn Lynch. I could have put Lynch in the tier one, but he's dealing with that suspension lingering over his head. Um, and Robert Turbin is the guy that the, the team really likes to come in on third down. So these are the guys that I think are going to make an impact, but they're going to be sharing. Jamal Charles has Peyton Hills behind him. Steven Jackson has Isaiah Pete. They want to limit Frank Gore's carries. Ahmad Bradshaw has David, uh, David Wilson. Doug Martin has Garen Blount. So those are the guys that you could probably get as, as an RB2, but they're going to be low end because they're going to be sharing. And the third tier, I put Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, Michael Turner, Beanie Wells, and Roy Hilo. I don't know what's going on with Roy Hilo. All of a sudden, he's just tanking 
the Redskins don't believe in him. B.D. Wells can't stay healthy. Michael Turner I already talked about. And with Jarvis Green Ellis, I think he's going to be in more of a time chair with Bernard Scott, another guy I like. You kind of touched on it a little bit with those answers, but how big of a believer are you in terms of handcuffing a top running back with uh, his backup? Uh, I always do. It, it all depends. If you're Obviously, if you're getting Arian Foster, you have to have Ben Tate. Ben Tate showed that he can be a starter in this league. Um, Adrian Peterson, I would definitely handcuff with Toby Gerhardt. Gerhardt has shown that he could be a starting uh, running back if he has to. Nate Jones Drew, I would tag with Rashad Jennings. Jennings, you know, has has looked good this uh, this, this preseason and in training camp. But once you start getting into the the Stephen Jacksons, the Frank Gores, you know, those guys. There's really not someone behind it. Steven Jackson has Isaiah P, but don't forget he's a rookie. Right. And Jamal Charles, I think, is probably one of the other ones on this list that I would handcuff with Peyton Hills because I actually think that Peyton Hills is going to make a bigger impact uh, than a lot of people think. But once you start getting into guys like Frank Gore, I, I think I would just forget about taking a handcuff. I just hope he's there during waivers. I mean, that's a spot that you could put a starting running back or a starting wide receiver into. Final two questions for you. In terms of uh, real pass-happy offenses like uh, Brady, Rodgers, Breeze, and I'm sure I'm missing a few, do you even look at their running backs, or do you just try to stay away from those guys if, if all, at all possible? Well, I do look at them, but I don't look at them as high. I mean, you look at the pack. I was hoping that uh, James Starks would finally be able to solidify himself as a starting running back. Of course, they signed Cedric Benson, so it looks like there's going to be a, a committee there like they used with Grant and Strux last year, so I'm going to try to avoid that. Uh, with the Patriots, though, I really like uh, Stephen Ridley. It sounds like he's coming on strong. Of course, they have Shane Vereen, and they also have um, Danny Woodhead. So if I was going to pick up a guy like Stephen Ridley, I would probably take him as nothing more than an RB3, only because a lot of these pass-happy uh Teams, also the Lions you can include there, they're going to have a committee. So I wouldn't take them as any higher than an RB3 at best. I mean, who knows? There's a chance that there could be an injury and one of these guys ends up being an RB2. But with a team like the Lions with Best and LaShore and Kevin Smith, I, I would try to avoid them as all possible. If I had to take one, I wouldn't take them as any more than an RB3 or a flex spot. Final question for you, Greg. Definitely appreciate your time. Look forward to doing this again. Uh, you know, eight-team league is what I mentioned, but if you want to go deeper, that's fine. Give me a guy maybe in those last three to four rounds that you think uh, somebody should look at and try to steal. Well, eight-team league, I mean, there's going to be a lot of gold at the, the last three to four rounds. Um, Malcolm Floyd I had listed, again, contract year, going to be a bigger part of the offense with Vincent Jackson gone. A uh, guy who I like, too, is Ryan Williams from the Cardinals. He's a backup to Beanie Wells right now. But as everybody knows, Beanie Wells, he can't stay healthy. I actually think that Williams fits the offense better, and he has an excellent chance to end up being the number one guy before the season. And another guy I like kind of took a backseat to Darren Sproles last year is Mark Ingram. Uh, he's healthy now, dealt with injuries last year in his rookie year. I think he's going to be a bigger part of the running game this year, especially around the goal line. Greg, tell me what people can find at FantasyKnuckleheads.com. Well, FantasyKnuckleheads.com, we're currently uh, selling our Dominator service. Just go to FantasyKnuckleheads.com, go to the upper left-hand corner, and you'll see Draft Guide, you'll see everything that we have in there. We have cheat sheets, we've got forums, we got you answer a question in the forum, I'll be there within an hour, which a lot of sites can't say they, they do, but go to FantasyKnuckleheads.com, check that out. We're also uh, selling our program from Dave McKay, so check that out as well. Like I always say, don't be an idiot, be a knucklehead, Bob. That's, that's what I, I, I try to live by that, Greg. I always appreciate <laughs> it, and I hope we can do this again in the near future. Definitely sounds good. Thank you very much for having me on.